So I'm testing out the new version of Overture 5, 5.3, and I thought I'd look at the new bi-track expression settings, which are really nice. And I put a piece in and use them in that. Now to use these bi-track expressions, what you want to do is go to your right panel over here and go to expressions and you'll see that there's a new set of eight user-based expressions that can be set by track here. You can see I've set all eight of them for the violin in this case. I'm using a Chris Hine violin and that has a number of sustain and legato patches here that I can use in this piece that's pretty much all legato. So what I did was go to my tools and expressions and add insert and then I can add my own new name for an expression that's going to map to one of the expressions in my library. You can see here, let's just take one for example, we have a dynamic expressive long uh, patch and I added one here that when I go and look at it in my uh, track, it's set to a key switch of D1 for this track and over here it's D0. I have to transpose up an octave, remember, in Overture 5 when I said key switches. So that's pretty much uh, what you do. If we want to uh, set a new one, I don't have any, one, any set in the uh, piano part. So when I go there, I have all eight of them still available. To set one, just click it and then right click and your expression panel will come up the same as what you entered on the left. And then you can just pick one of the new ones you put in there, uh, whatever it is, and then make whatever settings you need to to make that unique and hit apply. And then you're set for that track. And then you can just bring that S1 over when you need it. Oops, and apply it to the track you want. And what I suggest that uh, you do is um, because... I have these expression markings now. We can go and uh, look at a lot of them that I put uh, in the uh, violin part here. Uh, what I did is I put them in and then I uh, right clicked and made them invisible. Uh, if you right click any object in Overture 5, you can get these make visible and make invisible. So I, I'm don't really want these printed out in a score if I was going to print it. So I just make them uh, invisible. Right? And then you can go to this option show and then either hide your invisible sy symbols or uh, make them visible so I can see when I'm actually writing the piece what I'm doing. And so I made uh, quite a number of these I used in in this piece, I set some uh, of them also up for the uh, clarinet part. You can see I set some uh, legato patches, and then there's a number of short things that uh, that Chris Hine clarinet library has. So I set those as well. Of course, you don't have to use unique names here that are mapping to, to your libraries. You could use something that's um, common for all string libraries, let's say they have a uh, a, a sul punt um, patch, so I can create a new expression for that, as I did here. And then what I could do is go in and if, if I hadn't had put these in here, I could have, you know, taken that and uh, set that one up and I could have maybe four different string libraries that use that have a, a different key switch setting for you know Sul Punt and that, that that's a way that I could use them normally in the score. Uh, you don't have to use them the way I did as markers that you don't want printed. Very handy uh, to have eight additional expressions that I can set uh, by track. Eight unique ones per track. Uh, now, you can always 
take an expression, expression marking and put it in the score and modify it to make it unique. But to do that over and over again is tedious. It's really great to have these, these eight here. Now, one other thing uh, that you might want to be aware of is in, in this score, uh, let's just go to a violin part and go to the linear view. And uh, this one, I just entered the CC volumes for CC7. And you can see I put a lot of ex expressive uh, CCs in there for volume. But what happens in, with the volume is if I have dynamic markings in my score and I over, override them uh, with CCs uh, in my CC panel, uh, the volume markings, it'll either change or go away. So what you want to do is uh, create dynamic markings that will have no effect on CC7 if we can uh, we can do that. I think you can. So that's uh, use of these new bi-track expressions. Really handy, and I know you're going to really like them.